Okay, step two uh, of our apprentice program is installing a GFCI. What does GFCI stand for? Ground fault circuit interrupter. Now, you may hear people say GFI, um, they're talking about GFCI. Um, what does a GFCI do? Basically, a GFCI, um, you know, is a life safety protection device and it will trip when basically the current going through the hot lead does not match exactly the current going through the neutral lead, it will immediately trip. It's a fast acting device. It's there to prevent um, electric shock. Um, now, how do you install one? There are a few different ways uh, to install GFCI protection. Um, you can install a GFCI breaker, um, or you can install a, a GFCI device. Today, we're just gonna be focusing on the GFCI device. Um, now, we get a lot of calls from homeowners saying, hey, um, you know, our GFI went bad, we went and bought one at the store, we hooked it up exactly how it was, and it didn't work. Uh, this is more than likely totally true. Um, the problem is uh, different manufacturers put the line and load side of a GFCI um, on different terminals. This one, for instance, has the line on the bottom receptacle and the load on the top. Some manufacturers put the line on the top and the load on the bottom. So if you bought a uh, a GFCI device that was from a different manufacturer and it installed it exactly how it was, it's not gonna work because you have to have the line and the load wires right. Well, what is the line side of the wire? The line wire is the wire that's coming to the panel, okay? Um, that's the hot wire. The load wire is going to all the devices downstream. So what I'm gonna show you real quick is how to install a GFCI. When you get to the house um, and the GFCI is connected or maybe it's an outlet that's connected and um, the customer says, hey, I wanna put a GFI here, but you don't know what the, uh, the line and load is, what, which wire's coming from the panel. What you have to do is basically take all the wires apart Okay, and separate them, and then separate them into pairs. Like I can see these two wires go to a jacket, so I'll just hold them down over here. I can see these two wires go to a jacket, so I'll put them out over here. These two wires go to a jacket, so I'll put them out over here. Um, now, when you're taking off the device, you know, turn the breaker off so you don't accidentally get zapped. But once you get them all separated, I want you to go back to the panel and turn the breaker back on, okay? And then what you do is you take your presence tester um, and you turn it on and then you test, you test each wire. Okay, that's not the line. It would have beeped if it came from the panel. There. That's the line. You know this is the hot wire, it's going to the panel. This is a load wire. They're all separated, so nothing's connected here. So you know this this pair of wire is going to the is going to the panel. So these two are your lines wires. Um, what I typically do is I'll just, you know, stick a wire nut on it um, to signify it. Um, you certainly can mark it with a piece of tape or whatever you have so that you don't forget which wires are the line wires. Then I want you to go back to the panel, turn the circuit off, and go back up. Double check, you always double check to make sure that it's off. It's off, so now you install the device. Um, so we will go ahead and Hook our ground wire up first. Get a little terminal down here. We want to make sure 
this will fit under the terminal. Very good here. And then tighten that. Down there. Nice. And we know this is the line. It's great. Um, this is the load. So I'm going to notice that there's two holes for each terminal. So oh, I'm going to take one of the white wires and kind of straighten that out so it makes a good connection. And the neutral wires are always going to go on the same side as the ground terminal. So one of them will go here. Try to loosen this a little bit. There we go. Should slide in nicely there. Very good. I don't want that um, copper sticking out. I want it all in there like so. And then I'll take the other load wire, do the same thing. Um, This one short to be fast about it. Let's slip that out. So that I got wire there. And wire there. And then I will take my screw gun just to be fast here. Side. Just to be quick about it. Strip that off. Strip that off. Straighten that out. Take a little bit off. And that looks pretty good there. Take a little bit off. One hole, the other in the other hole, and try to make sure that copper <clears throat> isn't showing there so that it doesn't accidentally hit the ground wire in the box when you stick it in. Get it nice and tight. So these are the load wires. These wires are going downstream. Now you hook up the line. Again, you will have the line wires on the bottom screws. Make sure that it looks loose. It's not completely loose. little bit sticking out so I'm gonna go ahead and take that trim it a little more there we go stick in there nicely that fits see that sticking out I don't like that so I'll take it trim it reinsert and then we will tighten that down Boom. all right so now that it's in here um, we can test it. The wave. My motion detector went off. There we go. 
All right, so now let's go ahead and test this. We will turn this on. And we will go ahead and test. That pops out, that resets. Another way to test a GFCI is with this little plug-in tester. Um, you can see that these two yellow lights here, um, you can see the inscription here, that means it's a correct wiring. This button here will ensure that this device is working properly. Okay. Now, one thing I want to talk about is you know, what if you're in an older home? Now it's not code to do this anymore, but let's say as we just saw here that this bath, there's a bathroom and it's what these lights are wired to the receptacle and they don't want, you know, when it trips, the homeowner's complaining that now I'm in the dark, okay? Well, if you don't want the customer to be in the dark, um, what you can simply do is you take the wires that are going to the light and you put them on the line side. That means if you put them on the line side, then the wires are not GFCI protected, okay? It's going into the line and then it's going out the line. So this light will stay on even when this trips. We'll just go ahead and um, demonstrate that real quick. Take this off and then we, but we still want the other outlets on the load side. So we'll keep, we'll keep this outlet, we'll keep this wire on the load side because that's going to another receptacle. Um, we want that other receptacle to be GFCI protected. I'm only taking the wires that are controlling the light. Okay. So here's this one. And then we will go ahead and put this one back in. And I know this is a GFCI, but let, let's just pretend this is another receptacle. This is for my next demonstration. Um, so now you're taking the wires that, um, you know, control the, the switch leg. And instead of putting them on the line side, or the load side, you move them down to the line. I know that's sticking out, but we're going for speed here. This, put that here, let's get there. Tighten that down. Now, when you turn the GFCI on, the lights come on. The, um, let's say the, uh, the GFCI trips, the lights stay on because it's not protected by the GFCI anymore. It's going in and out of the line side. Uh, so that's the way uh, how to fix that problem in older homes. Um, another thing that you will see in older homes may be a two, a two wire system. A two wire system is basically an ungrounded system. It's got a hot wire and it's got a neutral wire. So this is what I'm demonstrating up here. And there, there's, there's a couple different ways to um, Fix, like let's say this this person had a three prong outlet on a two wire system. Well, the only the, the three ways to fix it is put a, a two prong outlet in, um, put a GFCI in, um, or rewire the circuit. So what this customer decided to do was put GFCIs in. So we we went ahead and uh, we put a GFCI at this device. And when there's no ground wire in there, you have to put this sticker on there, no equipment ground. You have to let people know. Now, the other issue, or the other thing is, um, if you go and you install this GFCI and you wanna test it, and you put your plug-in tester in here,
so you can see that this says open ground. Well, yeah, that's because it's a two wire system. Now notice what happens when you hit the GFCI test button. Absolutely nothing. It's not gonna work. The, way, the only way to test it on a two wire system is by using the face of the GFCI. Hit the test button, hit the reset button. Uh, so just remember that don't freak out when you put a GFCI in on a two wire system and your plug-in tester doesn't work. Um, it's not going to. Um, all right, let me make sure I didn't miss anything here for you guys. That, that's basically it. I mean, the last thing you need to know is where to install them. You install a GFCI in kitchens, bathrooms, garages, outdoor outlets, unfinished basements, or within six feet of water. So that is your second assignment.